Today we're going to be talking about the Nazino tragedy. In the summer of 1933, a Stalin-led Soviet Union would send thousands of deportees to an island in Siberia to create a self-sustaining settlement. This wouldn't go as planned as it would turn to violence, disease, and cannibalism. This is horrible history. It's 1928 and Stalin is implementing dekulakization. He wants to take all of the country's industry and agriculture and put it all under the control of the government. This is a big part of socialism. He wants to take all aspects of production and put them under the control of the government. He's pursuing socialism all in one country rather than a global approach that Lenin had. He believes that the country should be self-sustaining and take care of its own needs from within rather than getting any help from foreign countries or allies or neighbors. During dekulakization, Joseph Stalin was arresting, deporting, and executing millions of agricultural workers in order to take their land and redistribute it how the government saw fit. Any of the kulaks who survived dekulakization, if they survived through that whole arresting, deporting, execution part, then they were sent to the gulags. After taking land from all the kulaks, who were agricultural workers or rural farmers, this would cause a mass famine in the country that would kill off three to seven million people. It's hard to keep track when it's such high numbers and the government has control of all those records. You always want to look good on paper. During this time period, Genrik Jagoda, the head of the secret police, and Matvey Berman, who is head of the Gulag labor system, proposed a plan to create self-sustaining settlements in these large, vast areas that were unsettled, like Siberia. The original plan was to take a bunch of these agricultural peasants and send them out to these unsettled areas so they could cultivate and create agriculture in those areas. But what ended up happening was they took a bunch of fugitives from the cities too and mixed them in there. And I don't know about you, but city folk don't seem to work very well out in the country. I think they're going to fare about as well as you think they would. The program was also intended to get rid of people like merchants, traders, agricultural workers, and criminals. These were the type of people who didn't fit into the communist model of Everyone work for Mother Russia. They said within two years they would have this land cultivated and these settlements would be self-sufficient. Little did they know, this was after that huge famine from taking all the farmland, so their resources were running a little thin, so things didn't quite go as planned. Yeah, who would have thought that resources would be limited after you've killed off all your farmers and seized this land that was used for agriculture? Yeah, it's genius. It's genius, right? So the Council of People's Commissars approved the plan on March 11th, 1933. On April 29th, a train from Leningrad and on April 30th, a train from Moscow, full of these political fugitives, were sent out to Tomsk. This is a three, 4,000 mile train ride, and you just pack them in there through that inhospitable Siberian countryside. I'm sure they are freezing to death and they weren't fed very well. When these fugitives were transported from Leningrad or Moscow to Tomsk, they were given about seven pieces of bread or 300 grams of bread per day. But from Tomsk to Nazino Island, they were only given about five pieces of bread, or 200 grams per day. That was a ration for their fuel for what was about to happen. This mass famine and death and violence, terrible. That's, this is your fuel for the future, so you better eat all that bread. You couldn't give them more bread? Just give them a bunch of flour. Many of these fugitives were held in Tomsk until May because they were waiting for the Ob River to start melting which isn't really a good sign when you want to start an agricultural project if you're waiting for the water to thaw out. That sounds awful. On May 14, 1933, thousands of these fugitives were packed onto timber barges, which were meant to carry trees and logs, but now you're just going to pack a bunch of people in there and send them upriver. Nazino Island was about 500 miles north of Tomsk, so they had to ride the Ob River up to Nazino Island. With these thousands of fugitives, there were a few guards and a few officials that went with them and 20 tons of just flour. Just flour, you're not giving them any tools or any supplies to survive, any of that. You're just giving them flour? 
I don't know how you're going to eat flour. Without any food or cooking utensils or tools or anything, what were they supposed to do? How are they going to build shelters and cultivate the land and, I don't know, survive the winter? Were they really trying to resettle these people or were they just trying to send them on a death sentence? I don't know what this was. Even the guards who were sent there. Is this a way of firing them? Because this sounds like a terrible job. Ugh. On May 18th, the barge is hit Nazino Island and they're ready to embark on this terrible endeavor. There's about 300 women and about 4,500 men. That is a terrible guy to girl ratio and I feel so bad for those women who are put in this predicament. 27 people wouldn't survive the trip to Nazino Island. They might be considered the lucky ones. So now that the fugitives have been unloaded onto the island, now the guards have to get the 20 tons of flour onto the island and distribute it to the people. They use a system of brigadiers who were these people who would come and get the flour and then distribute it among about 150 people. I mean, you couldn't see anything going wrong with this. Many of them would resort to hoarding up the flour and keeping it for themselves. Even guards grew a little power hungry with this power over the flour. When fights would break out on the island, the guards would just shoot into the crowd and kill whoever they want. It kind of became a free-for-all pretty quick. What's even worse is after the flour was distributed, there was no pots or any kind of cookware to bake this flour into something to eat. So these desperate, hungry islanders would take this flour and just mix it with river water and eat that, many of them getting dysentery which is pretty bad. It causes a lot of diarrhea and stomach pain, and it can also lead to death. When you're that hungry, people just get desperate. They're gonna eat whatever they can. Some of the people on the island would try to build rafts to get off of the island because, hey, they would rather try their luck out in the wilderness than with these maniacal guards and these crazy criminals on this island. Many of these crude rafts and boats would just break apart in the icy water and many of them would drown or succumb to hypothermia in that icy Siberian water. Also the guards would be shooting at you so there's just threats and danger coming from every side. I don't know what these people were expected to do on this island. What could you really grow in a few days and what kind of tools could you create to make a shelter or make some food for the people here? Flour is not enough supplies and you have to give them tools in order to survive. Gangs of criminals quickly formed and they were murdering people to try to get gold fillings or gold teeth or jewelry off of the other captives. But I mean, why would you want this gold stuff? What can you trade it for? Who can you trade it with? I have no idea. It's not going to feed you. On May 21st, health officials on the island would find bodies that showed signs of cannibalism. Another 50 people would be arrested by the guards for cannibalizing other islanders. Many of the bodies were found with signs of cannibalism such as pieces of muscle removed or organ meats. Anything that was edible was really taken from these bodies. It's really quite sickening what was happening on this island. Within a few weeks, people were murdering other people for the sole purpose of eating them. How quickly things just devolve into cannibalistic, sadistic, crazy rage. Stalin would get word about the conditions on this island and he would shut this program down quickly. Anytime things get too rough for Stalin, you know it has to be pretty bad. About 4,000 of the people who were moved to this island wouldn't survive and another 2,800 would be moved to other settlements, which doesn't sound like a great idea under this great regime. With limited supplies, no shelter, and very inhospitable weather, disease was running rampant here. There would be typhus breakout and there would be dysentery from drinking this river water. There was just nothing good for these people here. They were set up for failure. The Nazino tragedy wouldn't come to light until Gorbachev was in power and he enacted the Glasnost policy. He was trying to promote transparency between the public and the government. He wanted to build trust with the people because of all the human atrocities that had taken place in the Soviet Union. So now when people would ask the government, hey, what happened to my grandfather? They can give them the answer of, oh, he was eaten on that island out there in Siberia. Yeah, that really makes me want to trust the government. 
Any attempt to leave the island would result in armed guards either hunting you down or killing you on the spot. But once you were dead, people would find your body and try to eat you. It's heartbreaking to see what people are pushed to in times of desperation and the lengths that they're willing to go just to survive. Thank you all for watching this video on the Nazino tragedy. I really appreciate all of you being here and it means a lot that you would come and listen to these stories. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. This is the Nazino tragedy and it's a part of horrible history.